The G5 range has seven different cameras that you can choose from, so let's break them down that we have here in front of me and see how good they are and what the picture quality is like. Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. There's a few things to know when you're getting into the Unify ecosystem, so stick around towards the end as we go to those in detail. And if you want, you can click on the chapter which will take you down to that section. In a previous video, we saw a quick chart of me comparing most of the gateways, but in this video, we're gonna be doing that with the cameras. So let's take a look at the chart. So the first four I have on the screen is the Dome, the Dome Ultra, the Bullet, and the Turret Ultra. So we have four different options on the front here, and they are very similarly specced. So they have different scenarios that you would probably end up using them for. So all four of them have a four megapixel camera. They all have 30 frames per second, but there's two different sensors across the four different units. The Dome and the Bullet have a five megapixel CMOS sensor, and the Dome Ultra and the Turret Ultra have a 1 over 2.4 inch CMOS sensor. In terms of weatherproofing, the Dome Ultra is not meant to be kept outdoors, it's for indoor use only, so keep that one in mind, but I have to say this is probably one of the smallest cameras I've seen to date. Relatively small, maybe there is something equivalent out there on the market. If there is, let me know down in the comments below, but this Dome Ultra is tiny for what it is. In terms of weather resistance for the rest of them, we have the Dome, which is IPX4 rated, the Bullet, which is also IPX4 rated, which basically means it can handle a little bit of water. So if there's torrential rain, it might actually affect it. But with a little bit of water hitting it with light rain, it should be okay. So under a covering would probably be the best place to use this. The Turret Ultra is the one that comes IP66 rated. So this is gonna be suitable for most weather conditions and you won't have any issues using this. This looks like a fully sealed unit. The G5 Dome is an aluminum alloy and so is the Turret Ultra. Whereas the other two actually have more of a plastic feel and finish. So it's just the housing at the back that uses some aluminum but the front is all polycarbonate, so it's all that plastic feel on the front. Processing power, they all have the same processor, the dual core A7, so in terms of picture processing, it's all gonna work around the same sort of speed. Power between four to five watts, so all similar across the board. Now the big thing is the viewing angle. The dome, the dome ultra, and the turret seem to have exactly the same in terms of that field of view, 102 degrees. The vertical view is 54 degrees, and the diagonal going from side to side is 120 degrees. The one thing to note is the bullet. It has an 85 degree field of view. The vertical is 45 degrees. In terms of resistance, the G5 dome has the one with the strongest resistance. This can take up to IK08, and those definitions will be coming up on the screen, so you can see how much force can be used against them. The Dome Ultra is IK06, Bullet and the Turret Ultra is IK04. So the higher the number is the more resistance it can take in terms of force. Finally, the price, how does this set across the board? Well, the one that can take the most hit is the most expensive, $179 or £172 depending on where you are. The Dome Ultra, £129.95. The Bullet, $129 or £123. And finally, the Turret Ultra, which is £129 or £95. So you have a few different options. Three of them are very similarly priced. It's the Dome that gives you the extra vandal resistance, which is that little bit more pricey. But what we'll work out is whether those images are any better. So we move on to the other three, which tend to vary a little bit in price. So this is the G5 Pro, which is a 4K 8 megapixel camera, 30 frames per second. It has an 8 megapixel CMOS sensor inside and IK04. It has a slightly better processor in it, which is a dual core A53, a 10 watt PoE power draw that it needs. This is slightly wider than the ones that we saw before. It comes in at 110 degrees, so it gives you that slightly more viewing angle. 60 degrees vertical and 127 degrees diagonal. This is the most expensive in the G5 range for $379 and £363. Next we have the trusty flex. Now this used to be the standard indoor camera that you would use you would use wherever you needed it and it used to be the most versatile. This one is very similar to the ones that we saw previously. So four megapixel camera, five megapixel CMOS sensor, IKX4 in terms of water resistance, IK04 in terms of vandal resistance. It's a polycarbonate finish, so it is fully plastic on the front of it, four watts of power, and it gives you that 102 degree viewing angle. This comes in, again, very similar to the price of some of these, so £123 or $129. Finally, we have the one that's just been released a little while ago, and that is the G5 PTZ. So, 5 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel CMOS sensors, IP66 rated, so slightly better usage outdoors, and IK04 vandal resistance. 
All of this is a polycarbonate finish apart from this bit here, which is the aluminium alloy. This has a 99 degree viewing angle and there's actually a two time optical zoom on this. So it goes all the way into 45 degrees in terms of your viewing angle that you can see. This comes in at $299 and is £286. It's worthwhile noting that all the cameras do have microphones built in, except the Dome Ultra. Let's jump straight into the image and you can see the four cameras that we compared to start with. And with three of them, we have that wider field of view for 102 degrees. So that is the Dome, the Turret Ultra and the Dome Ultra. And the bullet you can see is slightly more zoomed into the image. So there's that slightly smaller field of view. The colouring across them are fairly similar. You can see the bullet and the dome seem to have a slightly darker green on there. And this is with no adjustments at all. We then look at the Pro, the PTZ and the Flex. And you can see the colours are fairly similar across all of them. And we have the field of view which is even wider in the top right hand side with the Pro. So we can see just past that swing set on the right hand side and you can see the colors are fairly similar across all of them. We then jump into the night vision and you can see me walking across the back of the garden which probably starts about 10 meters away and moves towards the five meter mark. And then as we walk closer, you can see the image gets clearer on the dome, the bullet and the turret ultra. There is some sort of hazing and mistiness around the Dome Ultra, but I'm not quite sure what that is. If you've seen it, let me know down in the comments below. Let's move to the Pro, PTZ and Flex, and you can see the image for the color night vision of the PTZ is not the greatest as I'm about five to seven meters away and it gets hazy, but the Pro and the Flex work perfectly fine. And the vision is fairly clear as you come closer to it. And we're back with the daytime picture where I'm holding a license plate and then walking to the back of the garden so we can see how clear this image actually is when we walk along. Now we can see all four of them do a really good job. Even the Dome Ultra in the daytime, you're able to read the license plate across the board. I feel the bullet actually edges it on this one and it's doing a really nice job in terms of picking it up. Maybe that is that narrower field of view which is causing that to happen but it looks a lot sharper. Finally, we move to the other three, which is the PTZ Pro and Flex. Again, all three of these do a really good job in the daytime. The Pro obviously is that slightly sharper image with the 4K, there's a bit more clarity in it, but the PTZ and Flex both do a really good job. Now the PTZ will have auto tracking features on it if it's turned on, which is turned off at this point as we're doing a blanket image. But if you wanna see that video, go ahead and head over to my Unify Protect playlist. Now move over to the audio test. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. I'm standing about two meters away from the camera and this is the audio test from all the G5 cameras in the range. Looking inside the Unify Protect console, you can see we have all the cameras set up here and I wanna quickly run through the settings. There's no real difference as much between these. So I'm just gonna run through one and the rest of them are relatively similar with very minimal changes. So we have the camera itself, which has the status, what it's plugged into, when when the last motion was, the IP address and, and the bit rate. We have the recording mode. So this is where the most of the settings are generally done. So we have always recording, continuous or events only, how much you want to record before or after the event, the type of detection that you want. So you can go ahead and select animal, person or vehicle. And then we have the alarms as well. So we have baby crying, CO2 alarm or smoke alarm. So we can go ahead and save that so we can add those in and how much you want before and after the detection. We have custom or auto frames. So we want the most smoothest video and what the video compression is. Again, you can leave that to auto or you can go ahead and set this manually should you wish to do so. The encoding options you have enhanced or standard and the recording resolutions, because this is a 4K camera, we have 4K, 2K and HD. For the overlay information, there are four different options. You can have the time, the camera name, the logo and the bit rate if you wanna see that. And then we have the recording retention, which is either custom, 
So you can set 90 days or leave it at auto and it will just overwrite as the drive fills up. We have motion zones, smart detection zones, crossing lines and privacy zones that you can also set within these cameras. And finally, we have the settings. So you can go ahead and do image tuning if you want to. You can choose the microphone and the sensitivity and you can choose noise reduction or you can disable the microphone permanently if you don't want it to be recorded. We have auto and custom for night vision and we have the status light. There are a bunch of other stuff down here so you can share a live stream link so you don't have to give people access you can just give them this link. Notification settings so we keep them global or we can turn on push and email and we can even have geolocation so the offsite down here allows you to set this when you or your admins are away from site you get notified then. We have the advanced which is RTSP streaming so if you want to go ahead and use that you can. And then we have the management of either restart or remove. If you are new to the Unify ecosystem or Protect itself, you need to know that the cameras only run on Unify Protect. They don't run standalone, so you can't set them up individually and have them record to themselves. Neither do they run on any other NVR. So if you are looking to run Protect, then you need to get yourself either a cloud key, a UNVR or a UNVR Pro. Or if you're looking to run more than Unify Protect, then you want to look at some of the gateways that have more options built into it. I have another video that I released last week, so go ahead, I'll pop a link down in the description below. There's a lot to digest given the number of cameras we just took a look at, but I feel the Dome, the Turret Ultra and the Pro really gave a good nighttime image and the PTZ offers that big difference with the color night vision. But when I was standing about five to seven meters away, you saw it was struggling a bit with the image, so maybe that's something to unify to work on in a future version. Not sure why I was getting the issue with the night vision on the Dome Ultra, but let me know if you had that issue down in the comments below and if this has happened to you and what you did to rectify the issue. For the daytime image, I think they all did a really good job. Again, the Pro giving the most clear image being 4K, but the bullet also seemed to read the license plate walking across the back really well. And in terms of the audio, they were fairly similar across the board. I assume that they all have a similar sort of microphone built into them. The cameras are designed to be installed in different scenarios to cater for what you need. If you have a favorite camera though, let me know down in the comments below and I wanna know which one you like out of all of them. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.